let's discuss two problems from today's Division 2 round. Starting with D, you can read it now or listen to my explanation. In my explanation, we have a tree with n vertices. For a fixed integer k, we build another graph on the same vertices, where the two vertices are connected with an edge. If their distance in the tree used to be at least k. For each k from 1 to n, we need to output the number of components in such graph. In such three problems which feature distances, it's sometimes a good idea to highlight the diameter of the tree. Suppose this is one of the diameters. Suppose the number of edges on the diameter is d. We can instantly say that the two vertices, which are the endpoints of the diameter, will be connected with a direct edge for every k up to d. But for every larger k, no two vertices will be connected because there are no paths in the tree longer than the diameter. So let's see which other vertices will be connected to this diameter. Let's hang the whole tree by this diameter. So every vertex will be hanged by some point on this diameter. Suppose this vertex is connected by a direct edge with some other vertex for some k. But the length of this segment of the diameter is at least the length of this branch. Because if this branch is longer than this branch, then this would be the diameter instead of this. So it means that such distance is at least such distance. So if this distance is at least k, then this distance is also at least k. So this vertex is connected to this vertex. And analogously, this vertex will be connected to this one. So we've shown that any two vertices that will be connected for some k will be also connected to the endpoints of some diameter. Which means that all the vertices which have at least one edge in the new graph will be in the same component. So our task is just to find the number of isolated vertices. In order to do that, we'll find for every vertex v its maximal distance to any other vertex in the tree. And then for every k, we'll just look at the amount of vertices which have the maximal distance to any other vertex, at least k. All such vertices will belong to the same component, and all other vertices will be isolated. Let's look at the implementation. So here I read the tree, and I initially hang it by the vertex 0. The array d is initially the maximal distance from this vertex to any other vertex in its subtree. I use dfs to find d. Initially every d is 0, and when I find the sun of v, I update d of v with d of sun plus 1. And then I use the reroute technique to find the global maximal distance for every vertex, which I save in the array d all. I do a second DFS, but as I go through this DFS, I maintain the maximal distance from the current vertex to every vertex which is not a part of its subtree. So the global maximal distance is the maximum between the maximal distance in the subtree and outside of the subtree. And I find the two maximal d's among all sounds of v. When I descend from V into one of its sons, I update the maximal distance outside of this subtree with, the, with its old value plus 1, because I've added this edge, and the maximum D of every other son except for 2, plus 2 for those two additional edges. So when I descend into a son, I need to know the maximum d among all other sons of v. That's why I found two maximum d's among all sons, because if d of 2 is the maximum d, I will take the second maximum d and update d up with its value plus 2. If you want to know more about this technique, I recommend searching by the tag reroute or rerouting. So here I check if d of 2 is equal to maximum 1, then I take maximum 2, otherwise I take maximum 1 and add 2. 
Now when I have found the global maximum distance for every vertex, I create the frequency array where for every possible global distance, I calculate how many vertices have such distance. Then I replace this array with suffix sums, so that now CNT of i is the number of vertices which have the global distance at least i. So if t is equal to i, CNT of i vertices will belong to the same component as the two endpoints of the diameter. I add 1 for this large component and n minus CNT of i for every isolated vertex. But if CNT is 0, this is a separate case because this component doesn't exist, so I don't need to add 1. So to get rid of such case, I just output minimum of that in n. Moving on to problem E, you can read it now or listen to my explanation. In my explanation, we have a tree of n vertices, and there is an integer number written on every vertex. If you delete an edge, the tree splits in two parts. For every edge, you need to determine the largest number that will occur at least twice in at least one of the parts. If no number occurs twice in any of the parts, you need to output zero for this edge. So clearly, those numbers that occur only once in the tree will never occur twice in any of the parts. And clearly, if the same number occurs three or more times in the tree, then whatever edge you delete, at least one of the two parts will contain at least two of those occurrences of this number. So we can initially update the answer for every edge with every such number that occurs three times or more. So the only numbers that we still have to process are those numbers that occur exactly twice in the tree. If some number occurs twice, it means that if you take any edge on this path between the two occurrences and delete this edge, both of the parts will contain only one occurrence. But if you delete any other edge, the same part will contain both occurrences. So we shall update the answer with this number for every edge which is not a part of this path. Let's consider one of such paths that has the maximal label assigned to it. Let's call this label a max. For every edge which is not a part of this path, we already know the answer. Because it doesn't matter if this edge is or is not a part of any other path. As it's not a part of the path with a maximal label on it, you can just update the answer for this edge with a max, and no other update can beat this update. But we still have to know the answer for every edge on this path. So a logical thing to do is to consider the path with a second maximal label on it. Let's call it MX2. In the most general case, those two paths will intersect by some segment of the first path, which I'll call the main path. For those edges on the main path, which are not the part of this intersection, we can simply update the answer with MAX2, and the result will be the final answer for those edges. Because the only path that could beat MX2 was the path labeled MX, but they were the part of this path, so we couldn't update the answer for them with MX. But we still have to find the answer for those edges. Let's consider the path with the third maximal label. Again, let's say it intersects with this segment of the main path. And suppose it has a label MX3. For those edges, which are not the part of this smaller intersection, but the part of a larger intersection, we can simply update the answer with MX3, and this will be the final answer. So we continue doing that until we simply go out of paths. Of course, the main question is how to make it work fast, but this is easier to show in code, so let's look at the implementation. So here I read the tree, and for each edge I remember its index. Here I read the numbers assigned to every vertex. Here I compress the coordinates. B will be the sorted copy of the array A. I replace every value of A with the first position of such value in the sorted array of all values. This is needed to make every value in A smaller than it really is, 
while still maintaining all the relations between different values of a. If I need to uncompress the compressed value ai, I can simply take b of ai, as the compressed value is simply the position of the original value in the sorted array b. Then I create the vector of vectors where, which for every value has a list of vertices which contain such value. Global max is the maximum value which occurs at least three times. Initially, it's negative one. Max path is the largest value which occurs exactly two times. Start and finish are those vertices where it occurs. I go through all the compressed values from 0 to n. If the value occurs three times or more, I simply update the global max with it. If it occurs less than two times, I simply skip it. Otherwise, I update max path with i because it's larger than all the previous i's that I considered. And I update start and finish with where i 0 and where i 1. If start is negative 1, it means that I didn't find a value which occurs twice. It means that I can already output the answer for every edge. It's equal to global max. But if global max is negative 1, we should output actually 0. Otherwise, we uncompress the global max and output it. If there is at least one value which occurs exactly twice, then I've managed to find start and finish, which are the endpoints of the path with the largest label assigned to it. So they are the endpoints of our path. This DFS is meant to find the main path. Path will be the indices of the vertices on the path from start to finish, and path edges will be the indices of the edges on that path in the same order. DFS travels to the destination. If it managed to travel to the destination, it returns true, otherwise it returns false. When I step into a vertex, I add it to the path. In the end, if I didn't manage to find the destination, I will delete the vertex that I've added. If I reach the destination, I simply return true. Here I fix a vertex which I didn't visit so far. I add the index of the edge to this vertex to the vector path edges. Then I try to run DFS from this vertex. If it returned true, I also return true. Otherwise, it means that I didn't find the destination, so I'd have to delete this edge that I've added before. When the destination is found, path will contain exactly all the vertices from start to finish, and path edges will contain all the indexes of the edges. Initially, the array where on path will contain for every vertex of the path its index in the vector path. For those vertices which are not a part of a path, it will contain negative 1. But now for every vertex which is not a part of a path, I want where on path to contain the closest vertex on the path to this vertex. Precisely its index in the array path. Where on path for this vertex will be 0, where on path for this vertex will be 1, and so on. Where on path for this vertex will be path size minus 1. And if where on path for this vertex is equal to i, I want for all those vertices to have i as their value in the array where on path. Because now I don't need to know for every vertex where it is precisely in the tree. I only care how it is connected to the path. In order to transform the array where on path according to what I told you, I run BFS from all the vertices on the path simultaneously. I add them all to the queue. And in the BFS, when I go from one vertex to another, I copy the value of the where on path array. Then I want to build those nested intersections, starting from larger to smaller. L and R are the endpoints of the current intersection segment in the format of their indices on the path. For every intersection segment, I will store its endpoints in the specified format and the maximum label of a path which runs through this whole intersection. My first intersection is the main path itself, and I add LR max path for it. Then I go through all smaller values of labels, starting from max path minus 1 to 0, considering only those which occur exactly two times, of course. I look at the endpoints of this path, and I see where they are connected to the main path. I make start being equal to the smaller of the two endpoints and fin being equal to the larger of two endpoints. And intersect my current intersection LR with the segment which the new path occupies on the main path. Here I just want to make R not less than L. If the intersection is empty, I just want L and R to be the same. Then I add the new intersection with the label I. 
because this is the label of the largest path which runs through the solar intersection. So now in this array I will have such system of nested segments, starting with this one, which will have the largest label on it, then a smaller intersection with a small label, and so on. For every edge in this zone, I want to update the answer with 8. For all edges in this zone, I want to update the answer with 5, and so on. Same on this side. So I will just fix a pair of neighboring segments, and I will go through those edges and through those edges, and update the answer for them with the smaller of the two labels. And I will do it for every neighboring pair. So here I reverse. And I'm finally ready to create the vector ends for every edge. Initial value for every edge is maximum of global max and max path. But that's actually only for those edges which are not on the path. For those edges which are on the path, it's just global max. So here I fix a neighboring pair of segments from the array, i minus 1 and i. I go from the left endpoint of this segment to the left endpoint of the previous segment. And for every edge, I update the answer with the small label. And then I do the same for every edge from the right endpoint of the smaller segment to the right endpoint of the larger segment. And then I output the answer. If it's negative 1, I output 0, otherwise I uncompress and output. That's it for today. Thank you for watching. I remind you that I give private lessons of capacity programming. If you are interested, contact me on Telegram. Goodbye.